I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. Well, another record set in the White House. The new press secretary communications director lasted all of 10 days. What's behind the, the moosh getting the boot? Well, the official reason given is that apparently uh, Scaramucci uh, went on this profanity-laced uh, charade uh, where he was quoted, and uh, that's a very inappropriate uh, thing to do when you are basically the public face of the White House. Uh, but I think what General Kelly, as incoming chief of staff, is doing uh, is he's, he's acting like a CEO. He's going to can a few people. Uh, uh, to get everybody else in line and rebuild his team from the ground up. I expect we're going to probably see a lot more people being let go from the White House. And certainly it con- concerns me. The only people who are not being fired from the White House are those neocon war hawk advisors. And I would really like to see them get the pink slip. So many war noises being made by the U.S. Is there anyone they're not ready to declare war against? Uh, apparently not. Any place where they think they can get a war going, they're going to try and kick things up. They're already talking about going into Venezuela uh, in the wake of all the violence there. The uh, uh, Last week, the head of the CIA actually came on out and admitted that what's going on in Venezuela is another U.S.-backed regime change. What, they like this dictator? Or they want I'm, somebody else? Yeah, they want somebody else in there because... Uh, the, the U.S. has been trying to get into Venezuela going all the way back to Hugo Chavez uh, because uh, Venezuela, first of all, sells their oil for currencies other than the U.S. dollar. Uh, they tend to spend the oil revenues on their own people, and that's just a bad example uh, for all the other money junkie countries around the world. But uh, in general, yes, they want to be able to control uh, Venezuela's oil. Uh, the corporate media is even saying American oil companies are already lining up uh, to basically move on in on Venezuela's oil sector following the change of government. U.S. announcing sanctions against the leader of Venezuela. How do you punish him without punishing these poor people who in some cases literally are starving to death? Well, I mean, that's the whole point, is to just keep up the pressure until the leader steps down or fights back, and then you move forward from there. But right now, the United States just seems to have gotten to this sanction fever uh, where they're, they're sanctioning everybody. More sanctions on Russia, more sanctions on Iran, new sanctions on North Korea. Uh, now they're talking about sanctions on China. And all these sanctions are doing, they're, first of all, the sanctions against Russia are causing a huge amount of harm in the European Union. The EU is actually turning away from the United States, and they're taking Russia's side in this. Uh, Germany is saying that uh, there's going to have to be some kind of retaliation on these new sanctions. Uh, possibly a new trade war between the EU and the United States. Uh, and so nobody thinks this is a good idea. And these sanctions uh, used to work when the vast majority of the world's economy had to go through the U.S. dollar because of Bretton Woods. But already a substantial portion of the rest of the world has moved away from the U.S. dollar. They do direct currency swaps among themselves. They're going through BRICS, the Shanghai Economic Cooperative, uh, the Asian uh, Infrastructure uh, Bank, uh, and Russia's now talking about just dumping all their dollars completely and not having any of them in the, the Russian reserves at all. Well, several years ago, Russia stocked up on the Canadian dollar, and the word was they trusted it more than the U.S. Well, that certainly makes a lot of sense. Uh, the U.S. dollar uh, is subject to huge amounts of inflation. Uh, it's not backed by anything except the future slave labor of the American people, and there really aren't enough Americans, even if there were jobs for us all, 
to make good on all the treasury bonds that were used to create those paper dollars out of thin air. Why is a second special counsel being appointed, and who should that special counsel be? Well, we don't know yet. Obviously, it needs to be somebody from outside the system uh, that's not going to be compromised. The House Judiciary Committee voted through an approval, uh, rather a request for a second special counsel to investigate Hillary Clinton, James Comey, Loretta Lynch, the Clinton Foundation, the email scandal, and they sent that request to Attorney General Jeff Sessions last, last Thursday. If Sessions refuses to move on this, then uh, I think Trump will be in a position to fire him. In fact, there are rumors that Trump is already fed up with Sessions. He's had all these months to start prosecutions against Hillary Clinton for all the felony violations of Title 18. James Comey admitted she had committed during uh, that, uh, that uh, press conference, and uh, Sessions hasn't moved on that. So if Sessions refuses a special counsel... Uh, then I think Trump has an opportunity and should fire him. And uh, we may see a recess appointment for a new attorney general, which can be made without confirmation by the Congress, and that would last until the end of this year. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. Welcome back. We're chatting with Michael Rivero. The White House insists it is not in a chaotic state. Are they right? Or is uh, Kelly going to make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, that's Kelly's job, of course, is to run the White House staff. And uh, uh, basically, uh, he runs that staff in order to free the president up to deal with policy decisions. And unfortunately, Trump has been rather absorbed with dealing with the swamp. And one of the biggest mistakes he made when he came in to drain the swamp is the first thing it is, he hired a bunch of the same alligators to work on his staff, and they do need to get them out. Uh, and that's what Kelly is going to do, uh, we hope. Uh, certainly from the outside, it looks like it's chaos, uh, but we are not privy to what's going on inside General Kelly's mind, or for that matter, uh, Trump's mind. Uh, like I said, I'd like to see some of these war hawk neocons be given the pink slip, I think all of the Obama holdovers on mass ought to be let go uh, because Donald Trump, I think his biggest mistake coming into the White House is he wanted to be magnanimous in victory and he kept those Obama holdovers uh, because he doesn't understand Washington, D.C. power politics. He's from the world of business where the general assumption is if somebody is working for you and you are signing their paycheck, they're going to be loyal to you. That's not the way Washington, D.C. works. And I think Priebus is a good example of that. Uh, Donald Trump brought Priebus in as the first White House chief of staff uh, in, in an effort to mend bridges with the GOP going into 2020. And then it turns out Priebus is one of his biggest problems, was backstabbing Trump every opportunity, was uh, keeping certain people from seeing Trump, like Sean Spicer. Uh, and uh, turns out uh, Priebus was one of the biggest leakers to the anti-Trump media. And so, yes, it was definitely time for Priebus to go. What kind of changes, apart from, you said, uh, get rid of the, the former insiders, do you think Trump has to make to get some credibility? Because people around the world, I've heard business leaders being asked, well, how do you trade on the White House and their statements? They said, you just don't. You, you can't rely on any kind of consistency from there. Do we need more consistency? Yeah, there needs to be a consistent vision, and Trump had one going uh, on in, uh, but he is being used and manipulated by the people around him. We know, for example, the head of the CIA lied to Donald Trump and told him the CIA had absolute 100% guaranteed 
uh, evidence that Assad had gassed those people up at Idlib. And we know the story never made any sense, and there's nothing to support it. So Donald Trump is being manipulated by the people around him to serve their own varied agendas. And because those agendas don't always line up, that's where a lot of the chaotic behavior out of the White House is coming from. Debbie Walsterman Schultz, Imran Awan, and Seth Rich, what are you hearing about those particular issues? Well, this could blow up to be an even bigger scandal than the email server unless they confirm that Hillary was using her email server to sell U.S. secrets. But we have this Imran Awan and his brothers. Uh, apparently, uh, there was a, a bank fraud. Uh, uh, more are suspected involving millions of dollars. Uh, they were definitely spying on members of Congress uh, while they were working on the uh, Capitol uh, computer network. Uh, apparently, that some of that information went to the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, now we're finding out uh, that uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is literally running away from reporters. She doesn't want to talk about Awan ever since he got arrested at the Dulles airport. And uh, we keep hearing that she's trying to make a deal with the Capitol Police. Uh, Awan probably is going to make a deal. Uh, this, and all the Hillary people are absolutely terrified. The, uh, this could blow wide open, and it could unzip all the way back to the government-sanctioned drug running. Hillary has a book coming out called What Happened. It's about the presidential election. Is this book more, like, more likely to be found in the nonfiction or fiction section? Well, it belongs in the fiction section. Actually, it could be the world's shortest book and just say, I lost. But Hillary is has this sociopathic inability to ever see herself as at fault for anything, and the book is just continuing the same ramblings we've heard from Hillary ever since she lost the election. Oh, it was sexism by America's male voters. Uh, it was betrayal by this. The Russians were stealing the election. And I don't imagine that this book is going to sell very many copies. What do you think of the new cable show that sounds just like a copy of the title of, of your website, What Really Happened? Uh, I have to be very honest, I'm unaware of it. Well, the title is very close to yours. I, I thought maybe they're just trying to get on Michael's uh, success and, and use a similar title because you can't copyright a title. Well, if, yeah, and again, what really happened, uh, you, you can't trademark that phrase. And so uh, there are a lot of websites that have come up with names very similar to mine, uh, like, uh, 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 well, uh, Sorsha Falls website. There's a bunch of them out there. I can't think of any examples. Uh, I generally don't pay attention to them. Uh, we're all basically working together uh, toward the same goal. I mean, there are some websites that are clearly uh, set up by the government to cause disruption, plant hoax stories to try and embarrass us and damage our credibility. But by and large, most of the people in the independent media, we're all fellow travelers on that road to restoration of the republic. And uh, we're, we're still too small uh, to be uh, fighting amongst each other even though there are definitely people out there trying to kick off trouble uh, between us all. Did Hillary Clinton make the comment, if Donald Trump wins, we'll all be hanging from nooses? I heard that attributed to her, but I don't know if she actually did say it. Uh, but certainly it's, it's very real. I think the reason they're keeping the swamp churned up around Donald Trump is to keep him so busy that he doesn't have time to think what lies behind all of this. At this point, I have concluded Donald Trump does not actually know the real history of the Bush and Clinton narcocracy. I can't imagine him uh, sitting for one second knowing that the biggest drug smuggler in the United States of America is the U.S. government itself. Uh, I, uh, and uh, I can't imagine him sitting still for that. And I think that's why uh, everybody in the deep state was so afraid, because uh, the, the plan had been, going all the way back to 1980s Arkansas, you were always going to have somebody in the White House who was committed to maintaining the cover-up of what had been going on with all the gun and drug running around the world. Now it's Afghanistan. Donald Trump wasn't part of that. He didn't grow up in that deep state CIA-dominated culture of deception. And I think that's why they're so scared of him. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp., RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Rideout Shear Zone in Ontario. 
With grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold, a drill program will commence this spring to test the numerous targets located by recent groundwork. For more information, visit our website, rmroyalty.com. In Goddard We Trust. Welcome back. We're chatting with Michael Rivero. Michael, Vancouver is second only to Nickel or uh, Columbia to have a DEA office in operation. And I've heard from people on the street that they have had drugs and cash seized by people who look like police officers, but they're not Vancouver police or RCMP. Could that be the DEA trying to collect money and funds for black operations by the U.S.? Well, first of all, I would be wondering why the Canadian government would allow the DEA to be roaming the streets of Vancouver or maybe even if they're real DEA. Uh, but everybody uh, down here in the United States has gotten so used to the idea of civil forfeiture. There have been some cases of criminals who just go on out to the uniform store, buy themselves a, a police uniform and a badge, and they'll just stop people and say, you've got too much money in your wallet and I'm going to take it. And pe- people are just handing it over. Uh, they're just so cowed by all of this right now. Uh, but uh, in, in terms of the DEA, we know there's a lot of covert ops. We know that these various agencies are, are in a faction fight over whose budget's going to get cut. And uh, certainly here in the United States of America, many police departments are now dependent on the money they just steal from the American people. And uh, there were some states that were trying to pass laws uh, that... A person would have to be convicted of an actual crime before their property could be seized. And now we have Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, out there saying, uh, no, we're, we're going to set it up so that the cops can just take money whenever they feel like it. It's another reason he should be fired along with his attitude on marijuana. Uh, but again, right now, the police in this country are stealing more from the American people than all the robbers and muggers and burglars put together. In Las Vegas, what happened at a voter machine hacking competition? Well, it was actually at a uh, hacking convention in general, and uh, as an experiment, they got 90 electronic, I'm sorry, uh, 30 electronic voting machines, and they got some computer experts in there, and they said, okay, just break into this thing and change the results of the election. The worst time was 90 minutes, and the best times were considerably shorter. So after all that talk last year where Barack Obama is saying uh, it's impossible to hack into the election system, uh, these hackers prove that, yeah, it's actually quite easy. And if you remember the HBO documentary Hacking Democracy, at the very end, they show how the results on an election can be altered without even needing to go into the electronic machine. And it underscores the need for Trump's Election Integrity Commission to really start talking about seriously overhauling the entire election system from top to bottom, because our present system is set up to facilitate and conceal election fraud We need a system that goes the opposite way, that makes it really, really hard to steal the elections and very, very hard to hide that. And uh, I wrote up a blueprint. It's uh, right at the top of my website, how to have honest elections. And a lot of people in other countries have written in saying that these are all methods they have adopted ever since they got rid of their electronic machine. But there is a serious problem there. And until we get verifiable honest elections back in this country, we have lost control of this government. The Canadian Conservative Party leadership convention, right after their leader was chose, they shredded all the ballots, and somehow the number of ballots and number of members did not match up. Could that have been fraud? Well, it certainly has the indications of fraud. I mean, uh, here in the U.S., uh, uh, the, the voting uh, 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 councils, whatever you want to call them, uh, they have to keep the ballots for a certain amount of time, and it varies from state to state, uh, but they're not supposed to be destroyed in case there is a challenge to the election. And as we saw in Florida 2000, even with the ballots being saved, there's all kinds of games and skullduggery going on. Uh, the, the way they'll do a recount is they'll count a small set of the ballots, and if that small set of the ballots is at variance with the official results, then they'll count them all. And it turned out they were cherry-picking ballots to match the official results rather than taking a random sample. And we see that kind of thing happening all over. Uh, there's nothing new with it. Uh, we, we saw it back uh, during the Clinton years. 
there's a book out called Vote Scam by the Collier Brothers uh, that goes into uh, how the elections were rigged, and it involves Janet Reno and a bunch of other people as well. So it is a big, big problem, and it's time to fix that. And we have a president who's well motivated to fix it because he has to understand going into 2020 that the Democrats are going to have twice as many vote riggers. They're going to have twice as many illegal immigrants. They're going to have twice as many dead people voting against him. And if he doesn't fix the system, he's going to be a single-term president. What's the real reason behind the EU proposing to freeze bank accounts to halt bank runs? Well, that really is the reason right there. They have not been able to impose a cashless society. Uh, and so the only way they're going to prevent runs on the banks is to put a switch on all the banks where if the economy uh, gets into trouble, and it looks like it's about to all over the world, uh, and people go to the bank and say, give me, give me the money in my savings account, the bank is going to say, we can't. The accounts are frozen by the government. Michael, uh, anything else we should know that we haven't talked about today? Uh, not well, we, we've got all of these tensions breaking up all over the place. U.S. against North Korea, India against Pakistan. Ever since, uh, Sharif, uh, was driven from office, the generals are in charge there. Uh, India and China, both in the Himalayas and in the South China Sea. And it just seems like we've got way too many world leaders who believe a war is their best way out of whatever mess they are in. It is very troubling, uh, especially for those of us in Hawaii out here when they're talking about war with North Korea, war with Russia, war with China, war with the Philippines now, to th consider that the future of the human race right now is in the hands of whichever world leader is the least mentally stable, and frankly, most of them would look really good in a straitjacket right now. Why would the U.S. want to fight the Philippines? Well, it all came down to the Philippines' attitude on the drug trade. We were all buddy-buddy with the Philippines until Duterte started saying we've got to take a hard line with the drug dealers. We're just going to shoot them where we find them. And Obama went on down there and said, don't you do that. Don't you shoot those drug dealers. That's not the right thing to do. And Duterte told Obama to just mind his own business because it's his country. And then all of a sudden, ISIS is in the Philippines and the U.S. is talking about needing to intervene. And once again, we're seeing the face of the narcocracy. Obviously, the Philippines were an important uh, link in the chain of drug flow around the world, just as Afghanistan was. And didn't we just have a mayor of a Philippine city killed by one of those drug death squads? Yes, absolutely. Does that make it scarier for everybody? Well, it makes it scary, certainly for those who are involved in uh, drug sales or drug money laundering. Uh, and we know how bad uh, drug corruption can get. Uh, uh, a while ago, Colombia actually put their president on trial uh, for being tied up with the drug cartels. And unfortunately, he was acquitted, but at least the Colombian people had the gonadal tissue to at least try and bring justice to the uh, environment. But uh, again, the war on drugs is really the war on the competition's drugs. Uh, the whole fast and furious gun running to one of the Mexican drug cartels was to allow them to kill off the other competition so to keep prices high. It's all the politics of contraband, and it has our nation literally by the throat. The Canadian government has pledged to legalize marijuana sales July 1st. However, in the meantime, they're still busting people for simple possession, something like 17,000 arrests since Trudeau was elected. Why would they be arresting people for something they plan to make illegal or make legal? Well, because they're going on the timetable, and I don't know what happens to these people who are arrested, if they're uh, sold off to the uh, prison factory complex, or uh, if their property is being seized, there could be a financial motive. Uh, if, they're, if they're just being uh, arrested and ticketed, I, 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 really, I really don't know. It doesn't make sense. Certainly the police officers are trying to maintain a good arrest record, uh, so they're not going to cut them any slack. And uh, looked at the provincial jail rolls, something like 90% of the people there are there either for alcohol or drugs. Well, again, we learned a very painful lesson with prohibition uh, that you cannot regulate people's behavior. And a lot of people are saying it is time to decriminalize marijuana. It's certainly a lot less harmful than tobacco. It's a lot less harmful than alcohol. But unfortunately, big alcohol and big tobacco in this country are still very powerful lobbies 
Uh, and again, they, they are trying to fight all of these decriminalization, legalization across the country because uh, in places where marijuana is being legalized, they're already seeing beer sales fall off. And also fewer impaired driving charges. Yeah, people on marijuana, they don't go on out and get into trouble. They stay at home and relax. We just had a chart that somebody dug up from the Canadian Pharmacy Marketing Association. They listed marijuana as a high-risk substance and very harmful, and they had tobacco listed as the lowest-risk substance. I thought that was the biggest cause of preventable death on the planet. Well, absolutely, but again, we're seeing so much of what is called science is actually skewed by economic and political interest. Well, most drugstores, one of their biggest selling items is tobacco. Yes, absolutely. Michael, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You can find us on YouTube at Talk Digital Network. Questions for our guests or the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.